This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are looking to save costs, increase profits, and be more in control of your inventory, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us a process to optimize your supply chain, de-risking your business, and boost profitability. I'm talking about Jamie Paros, who from a young age, clearly realized he had an entrepreneurial spirit built into his DNA. His hunger and uh, motivation for change led him to discover the Amazon FBA business model. Thanks to his incredible work ethic, success, and global contacts, he became one of the most well-known influencers in the Amazon space. Now, Jamie spent his days in the community giving where he can, also reinventing Amazon supply chain processes through various business ventures. Hey, hey, Jamie, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, hey, Gian Marco. Thanks for uh, having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Really looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, you know, we have we always talk about a process in uh, at the Seller Process Podcast, right? So today we'll, we'll dive into how to um, optimize, how, how can Amazon sellers uh, can optimize their supply chain, right? So uh, we we had a, a chat before this interview, so that you you told me about your uh, your process to optimize your supply chain. So I'd like to dive into that. So tell us at a high level first, you know the the, the process, and um, then and then we will go, you know, into into more details uh, specifically. So what yeah. what what is the process and what are the benefits you've got from you know uh, implementing this process? Yeah, it's a really good question. And um, you know, when we had our chat before I came on, you know, on the podcast, I was surprised that you're implementing a lot of these things as well with your experience being in China. So um, that was really um, surprising because I, I believe that a lot of Western sellers, and this is just my own opinion, um, you know, I believe that their op their idea of optimization is let's get these cartons right let's optimize containers let's optimize you know pricing from freight forwarders what can we do to maximize i don't want to ship any air you know all these kind of conversations then let's look at our 3pl what are they charging what are they charging are they doing per cbm are they doing per pallet and they look at their whole supply chain that way through the last couple of years i would say that we were guilty of that you know, we were optimizing cartons for maximum spacing containers and, and all that sort of stuff, sending full FCLs over to 3PLs, et cetera. And then through, I guess, the pandemic um, and through some contacts, um, you know, globally that we have in conversations just like having with you, you know, you start asking questions from other sellers and, you know, what are you paying for container prices? What are you doing here? What are you doing there? And this common theme with the eastern sellers was that they don't have the same strategy and that sort of caught my eye and i started delving deeper into this and that's why i was so surprised when i spoke to you that you were you know implementing this in your business um so the whole concept of using 3pl in the us spd ltl that whole what we considered the cost of doing business that's just the cost of doing business that wasn't the case um they didn't have these costs they didn't have these strategies and as we delved in deeper running amazon businesses from china made sense to me with numbers we started delving deeper like i said smaller weekly ship shipments de-risking not putting all our capital into three four months of inventory on the water um you know things can happen to those containers and business continuity is at risk and it all just started to make sense these eastern sellers they i mean they had the advantage they had a geographical advantage they had their own warehouses or their family had warehouses or they were you know storing in their suppliers warehouses all these sort of tactics that we had never heard of before we would maximize our containers send them to the us and just cop all those expenses on that side for those third hand third party handling fees and costs so what we started to do ourselves is um look at that strategy and we actually built a business around it which we can talk about a little bit later um 
And yeah, we're now bringing these Eastern strategies, if you so call it, to the Western sellers, giving them that edge to be able to have that geographical, you know, equality, if you want to call it that. Right, right, right. So that's very interesting. As maybe, as you said, you know, I I knew that already because I lived six years in China. So maybe I'm doing business the way Chinese people are doing. So let's unpack that, like how Chinese people are doing business, how they are, um, you know, managing their supply chain. So when people think about Chinese sellers, they think of manufacturers, and that's not the case. There are actually sophisticated businesses over there that they're not manufacturers they're just sophisticated sellers and you probably know some living there you know what i mean they're not necessarily a manufacturer they've got great business great supply chain why aren't they you why aren't they having the same costs as me you know i wanted to ask that question so what are they doing they're controlling their whole inventory levels in amazon from china so they monitor that with their own systems whether it's however they build them and they've got, you know, three or four staff in their little warehouse or their family warehouse and they monitor their weekly shipments, they monitor their weekly sales and drip feed straight in, eliminating that whole ecosystem that we implement and just accept as, as costs as part of doing business, they eliminate that. Um, I, I can ask you a question. Do you think, do you think that a, a Chinese seller not a manufacturer, just a Chinese seller has the same costs as me in the US. No way. They would never do that. Um, of course. And so, yeah, we unpack that. Okay, exactly. So that, that's very interesting. So then let, let's cover uh, for a second, like what's the, the current way? So people are using the 3PL, sending from China to the 3PLs in the USA. So let's let's uh, go through that process. Yeah. And what are the of disadvantages of that? Adva let's say advantages and disadvantages of that process. And then okay. let's let's dive deeper into the, the, the recommended way, the way we're we're talking about. I think, you know, the disadvantage is the obvious ones uh, on cash flow. If you talk about anyone who's trying to scale with multiple SKUs, you know, um, if you're looking to optimize shipping correctly, that's a lot on your cash flow. You're paying up front for all those containers, all those duties, um, all the transportation from the port to the US 3PL, the receiving fees, the clean out container fees, the dehiring, the decanting of the containers the storage fees that they charge, then the prep, the label, the SPD, LTL, that is all costs that you have to reach into your pocket and pay before even one unit's got into Amazon. So there's a there's a very there's a very clear disadvantage of all those upfront costs that others don't have that we have to find. And then you hear the old cliche, Amazon or, you know, e-com is a very cash intensive business. Um, of course it is. Look how much, you know, you've got to lay out on the line before you even see a product go into Amazon. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the disadvantages. I think one of the big disadvantages too, which people don't talk about, is time of efficiency. So let's talk about a Western seller or, a, you know, a US seller or someone like me from Australia. I've got to email my freight forwarder, tell them that there's goods ready. You know, what's what size of PO it is and what size the order is, HS codes, you know, it was the same as the last order. Okay, but how many cartons this time? Oh, it's this many. You know, it's this many CVM, this many kilos. Okay, I'll get your price. Then I'll go talk to someone else and get another price just to make sure I'm in the ballpark with other freight forwarders. That's two, three days. Then pick up, then to the port. They don't know whether or not you're going to ship with them or not. So they have probably haven't even booked a container or they haven't even booked you space if it's an if it's an LCL. And then people start saying about this transparency thing with shipping. Oh, I haven't had a good experience with shipping. I, I, I've been involved in logistics all my working career here in Australia, a family business. Um, I spent a lot of time in China. I didn't live there, but um, like yourself, but I've spent a lot of time in logistics. And I know that when it comes to efficiencies in Amazon sellers, what I saw coming in from outside of Amazon into e-com, it's not done right. Um, it, it really isn't. And then you hear about the bad stories, you know, I spent all this time at the port in China. Well, that's probably because your freight forwarder didn't even have a container booked because he didn't even know if you were going to talk to him, you know, except that quote. There's weeks of time and then 40 days shipping. 
And if you're going direct to Amazon, okay. But if you go into a 3PL a week at the port, pick up from the pick up from there to the 3PL, check in there, process everything, and pay more money to just get your units into Amazon. That's not efficient. That's that's not a finish, uh, efficient at all. Where the Chinese have got great relationships with their freight forwarders, great pricing, and they can at the drop of a moment, bang, call a freight forwarder. There's someone in their warehouse that evening picking up 12, 15, 50 cartons. It could be small products. It could be a 1,000 units that they need to ship that week. Bang, they're in there. You've seen it. Bang, they're in. They pick up. They're at the port. They're in containers. They've got good connections. They've got local pricing. They've got local language, local knowledge, and it's efficient. We don't experience that. And, and I feel bad for people because they give that model uh, they don't give it a chance because of these feelings that they may have about that shipping process, but I don't believe it to be true. And that's the, that's why we've built the business that we have to eliminate right, right. all that for people. Okay. Okay. That's very cool. So let's dive into that. It's like, so let's, let, let's share with people, like how can they actually do it the right way, the efficient way we're talking about. So I'm bas basically managing the whole supply chain from China directly and shipping from, from China to FBA in the US or in Europe, whatever they're selling. So let's now talk about like, why is this more cost effective? How can they actually then, um, you know, pull this off? Yeah. Like how can they? Well, what we built was, um, you know, there's seven business partners spaced out across the world in our business Skewdrop. And um, Skewdrop was born out of necessity um, for us to have this model because it wasn't easy without being in China. Now, we had friends and now business partners, but before, nowhere really where we could tell a supplier, hey, can I put my stuff somewhere? No, you got to get it out of here, man. Like, I've got no room. Oh, well, where do I go? You know, I didn't know anywhere. Um, it's very limiting with the language barrier and, you know, where do I send an email? Where do I send my FBA labels to? How do I know it's going to really happen? You know, it's all these little things. So we built what we want. And, you know, um, we built the business skew drop. So what happens is we basically become your logistics partner from China, managing all your master cartons from China all the way into Amazon. A 50,000 foot overview is you can create an account with our business. We have warehousing, we have staffing, we have inventory software management, we have logistics partners all the way from China to Amazon. You create an account, you set up, we integrate with Amazon Seller Central. Um, we upload all your products, you bring them into the system, you can send them to our warehouse. We've got an internal delivery system. You get a small label that you put on every cart so we can recognize that at our warehouse. Our warehouse is state of the art. It's all scanned pallets, racking like there is thousands of cubic meters space there. Our staff are extraordinary. As you know, the Chinese know their logistics. If you talk to the right people and you get involved with the right people, they're, they're quite sophisticated when it comes to things like this. So in essence, you can create an order when it's finished. You send it to Skewdrop down the road in China. We store, we manage through a software. You create your weekly shipping plans through our software. We integrate with Seller Central. It creates a shipping plan in two seconds with all your FBA, FBA ID sent to our staff in an instant and all the pricing from our logistics partners for slow boat, medium boat, fast boat, CBM, kilo rates, UPS, truck logistics, air freight, instant. That all happens in 20 seconds. Okay, great. So great. Tw 20 seconds a week, you can send your weekly shipments. It's, I mean, there's more to it than that, but that's a bit of an overview. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, cool. So, but why, so uh, so then in, the, in this case, you will be, uh people might say you are like becoming the 3pl uh it's it's a, it's kind of a 3pl right but it's based mm -hmm. in china right and instead of being based yeah. in in the us right so that's the main difference right and being based in china you can command like much lower prices right how, how that does happen how can you be, yeah, yeah, be of course. more competitive than than the of us of course so we don't charge receiving. So you can send us one box or five containers. There's nothing to receive, put on our pallets, scan them all and put them away. There's zero cost to any seller to receive and hold. So you pay and you finish with your supply, you send them to us, the job is done, finished. You only pay for what you send. Our prep fees are cheaper than the US. 
Our storage fees are maybe 30, 40% cheaper than the US. And then our freight, if you if you think about, we've been building this for two years, we've seen every price. We've seen the dirt cheap Chinese forwarders and we've seen the really expensive Western forwarders. We don't sit in the middle, we sit on the cheaper side of the middle and we've seen every pricing under the sun. So we're quite proud of what we offer. Um, and we've been live for, you know, just on two and a half months, we've got a hundred brands using our business already. Um, people have seen the savings. Another thing is what you need to think about is, do you know how good it feels when you finish your 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 inventory order with your supplier and, and it arrives in skew drop and you don't have to pay 4,000 or 5,000 and 1,000 in duties. You don't have to pay it, it's weekly. What we worked hard with with our Chinese partners is this, because I know this will be a question. How can it be the same sending weekly compared to the whole lot in one hit, right? We said to our logistics partners, if we can't have the same, like say something is $2,000 for three months worth of stock, you know, it could be half a container load. We need it to be sent weekly and still be $2,000. Because if it's not, we don't have a business. We're here promoting weekly shipping, but if it's more, people are just going to send it in one hit. So we actually, before we even started, they trusted our our um, our model, what we could bring to the table, um, and they gave us those rates. And that's really hard to achieve in China without runs on the board. Um, but our founders and our partners in China were able to secure unbelievable contracts that if you if it costs you $1,200 for a little LCL, it'll cost you $100 a week with us. It's legit a week the same. It's like a no-brainer. Fully insured, door-to-door -door into Amazon, eliminating all the US side of things, the SPD, the LTL, the whole lot. Cash flow, it's crazy. Right. Right. So basically, one of the advantage you're you're creating in into this like supply chain structure is also the pre-negotiated deals with uh, logistic partners. Is that an, an important part of the of the whole process? Isn't it? It's it's really important, and anyone can go to our website skewdrop.com, and we've got a live pricing calculator. You can enter in your last shipment, whatever you sent, whether it's 10 boxes, 100 boxes, 2,000 boxes, whatever you sent. Last time you sent something from China, enter in the cart dimensions, the FBA warehouse, wherever you went to, and it'll give you our live pricing right now every day. Our prices are updated weekly in the back end of our algorithm. We check CBM, kilos. Sometimes CBM is cheaper than kilos. Sometimes kilos is cheaper than CBM. But when you're dealing with a freight forwarder, how do you know? We've got a 1,168 data points that our algorithm checks for every FBA warehouse possibility, slow boat, medium boat, fast boat, UPS last mile, truck last mile, air freight, and everything in between in 20 seconds, all visual transparent. You can tell us how you want to do it. You want to do slow boat this week? Or do you need stuff in a hurry? You want to do fast boat? Right. It's incredible. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, definitely, you know, one of the way to, you know, uh, scale up your supply chain, you know, optimizing your supply chain is basically kind of jo joining like bigger structures that are, are mm -hmm. optimized for that. Yeah. I, I can, yeah. I can see, I can see how the advantage can be built there because it's basically the way like aggregators are doing, like some, some aggregators are basically, they, they have built what you have built, uh, but for they themselves. just use it for themselves. Right. Yeah. So they built their own ARPs. Exactly. Exactly. So this yep. way, basically, you know, uh, we're kind of democratizing the, the, the supply chain, um uh, assets right that uh that you know the normal normal sellers cannot create just by themselves but you know using a structure that like the one you created you know it, it creates yeah. efficiencies for everybody right not just for i think the, I, th I think just if i can just chime in there one really big advantage for some of our customers is the fact that they can have multiple supplies around china and consolidate with us so mm -hmm. everything's under the one warehouse work, rather than trying to liaise and optimize for multiple destinations. Are you ready? Oh, no, I'm not ready. Well, I need you to be ready because I need that in that container. You know, 
What about are you ready? Can you send that to him? And then he's going to send that to her because they're going to load it all. Like that goes on. That's a nightmare. And then that person's got to agree to, you know, do all the FBA prep for everything. you got to make sure that happens. Some people are uh, storing in their suppliers, warehouses, and relying on emails and FBA IDs for some of their stuff. Some of their stuff can't. They've got to send it to Amazon. Some of their can't. They've, they've, they've got an MOQ of three, four months. They've got to use a US 3PL. The flexibility of just having everything in China and, you know, being close to a supplier as well. If something happens to your product, they're just down the road. You know, they can fix things. Um, we had a case where um, a, a, one of the sellers said to us, I wish this had been out two months ago. I sent everything to the US into a US 3PL. I sent my first 300 units into Amazon. The first few sales, there's a defect. So I pulled everything, removal order. Now I'm waiting for parts from China. The 3PL have to unpack everything and fix it all. This one part was defected. If that was in China in our warehouse, you just get it, send it back, say fix it and send it back. So there's all these different advantages of, of being in China. Also new products for new sellers. I know we're talking high level here, but for new sellers, they've got to spend all their money on the product, all the money on the shipment up front, their duties, the US side things, 3PL, LTL, SPD, before they get one sale. Before they even get one sale, they have to spend all that money. And then people say, oh, it's really risky. You've got to be careful. You've got to do your data properly. Of course you do when you're launching products. But if it's in China, send 100 units. And then next week, send another 100 units. And then the next week, send another 100 units. If it kicks off, send a fast boat. And fingers crossed, you know, you've got a winner. We've got the supply there in the warehouse. We can back it up. But you haven't committed. You haven't over, you know, you have, you're de risking your business with new product launches. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's that's one of the, you know, for me, it's actually kind of normal. Like it's the way I've done it <laughs> uh, all the time. But uh, yeah, I guess, you know, for anybody who is not doing that way, I mean, they are definitely like losing, you know, competitiveness, mm. uh, not doing that way. So definitely, I mean, that's the way to go. Uh, I, I would I would still say, you know, uh, just to make things fair uh, that, you know, like 90 percent of my inventory, I, I manage it through this way we just mentioned. So all the stock, it's in China. Mm in a warehouse uh, and then uh, I ship basically on, on a weekly basis, a new really? shipment. Yeah. So, so that, you yeah, know, right. it's going to be, um, you know, the, as you, as you said, we do the risk the shipments, right. Because sometimes, you know, one shipment can get um, held up, held up uh, the customs. Right. Uh, but then mm -hmm. I still take, uh, I still store uh, say between 10 to 15% of inventory in a, in a warehouse in the US just to be quick, you know, just to have it in 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 a week or in a week or mm. two uh in case of emergencies, right? So but buffer that's, stock, that's, buffer stock is yeah. very smart. It's, it's a just, smart concept. Exactly. So that's yeah. just because you know uh I, I don't want to ship you know products by air from China because it's super yeah. expensive. So I just keep some buffer stock in in the US uh, which I you know I always try to never use it i i kind of strive mm. to always you know go through directly from china and trying to never use a buffer stock because that's just for emergencies right mm. and mm -hmm. yeah so that that's what i strive to do so that's the only way you know i think it's convenient to use like i use us mm. 3pl otherwise you know all the shipments should go from from china and I was very surprised when we spoke, mate, I must admit, because I speak to hundreds of sellers here in Australia. And like when I spoke to you, it was actually pretty refreshing that um, that you're all over this, you know, concept. But as you said, as I found out more, you lived in China for six years and you've seen it firsthand. Yeah, yeah, probably that's 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 the case. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't aware of the other side of the of the coin. Yeah, so yeah, talking yeah. about supply chain, like um, you know, closing the 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 topic on optimization. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the main metrics that we should track in order to assess that we are efficiently managing our supply chain? Well, obviously, cogs are an obvious one. You know, cost of goods. You know, um unit cost that that's going to increase when you start adding, you know, costs that you don't need to incur. Um, so you need to be mindful of that. But I think one metric that goes unnoticed is, you know, inventory held versus sales. Um, and not a lot of people talk about that. You know, if you, if you look at 
you know, either Amazon or a 3PL, how much stock are you holding there for how many sales you're performing? Um, that's a that's a really crucial number that we look at. Um, and, you know, it's, it's no secret that people that are drip feeding from China have got a really optimal number. You, your number would probably be extraordinary because you've been doing it for a, a long time and you've, you've, you know, adjusted to this strategy. So inventory held versus sales. If you think about putting four months or three months of stock on the water, that cash is sitting, you know, all that shipping, all that SPD in that you're going to have to spend coming up that whole ecosystem supply chain, if you want to call it is, is a big number. Another thing is, and and I have to be biased here because supply chain cost time, and we're entrepreneurs. You know, um, it, you you always hear the cliche. What about working on your business and not in your business? And a lot of us get caught because supply chain's so demanding. Doing it the other way, I'm talking about here, Gian Marco. So the other way. People have either got headcount, VAs looking after it. Oh, my VA does all my shipping. So even that, you know, you've got to pay for that. Um, and that's expensive. And the reason why I'm saying that you've got to be biased here is because with our system, it's so simple. I'm literally talking two minutes a week. There's no emails to a freight forwarder. There's no emails to a 3PL waiting for them to see if they receive labels. There's no... There's there's no um, back and forth with your supplier. When can my freight forwarder come and pick it up? There's no back and forth with your 3PL. Is 3PM okay for the container to come? No, 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 I can't do it today. It's got to be tomorrow. Oh, all right, I'll ask my freight forwarder. Hey, can hey Jack, can you take it at 2 p.m.? He said 3 p.m. No, I can't do it today. It's got to be – that's all time. We've all got those emails in our inbox. They're, they're crazy. Those conversations are real. WeChat conversations are real. WhatsApp conversations, they all take our time. And we've eliminated that because we didn't want that. You know, our seven partners in this business, we're all Amazon sellers, all seven-figure Amazon sellers. We built what we needed and what we wanted. Originally, we are building this, like you said, um, for ourselves, like the aggregators, you know. Um, we This concept was going to be for us. And then we said, no, nah, look, we, we've got to help more people um, and do this because this is, you know, the penny dropped with us. So they're, they're the things that I look at, time, cash flow, Cogs, efficiencies, headcount of VAs and people involved in your business, all that kind of thing. I look at. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, that's that makes it like uh, including supply chain in, in, a, in a broader perspective, right? Uh, also looking at how much you know of your people are working on that. So that that's important. Actually, it's an yeah. aspect that I think I, I never thought about. Okay, that's mm. cool. So uh, for our last question, uh, this mm -hmm. is kind of our signature question about how to basically uh, get more with less. So what is your best advice to achieve more with less when it comes to efficiently managing our supply chain? One thing that people don't usually think about is when they put an order in, let's call it 4,000 units and it's going to last you three months, just argument's sake. 4,000 units, three months. And they're always on the back of the supplier. When is it ready? When is it ready? You said 50 days. We're getting close. Most, and you would know this, most conveyor belts, most factories, depending on product, they can't manufacture everything in one hit. Sometimes they do final touches of some products all in one piece, but very rarely do they do it um, where some of your product is, is already ready out of the 4,000. Why aren't you getting that out? Get it on the water or get it into our business. Start sending weekly shipments, monthly shipments. Create POs differently. Don't scare your manufacturer and say, hey, I'm not going to order 4,000. I'm only going to order 1,000. Say, I'm still going to order 4,000, but I want you to do 1,000 every month for me and keep them working. So then you become more efficient because they've got to think about, oh, my God, there's 4,000 units I need to make. But if it was 1,000, they'd probably be done in 20 days and then do another 1,000 and then do another 1,000. People go in with the big kill, you know, the big PO, the three, four months worth, fill up a container, put it on the water, you know, and we're talking about the same things again with risk. But if you can send, and I'm not just advocating our business, but if you can send us or a freight forwarder or, you know, like you're doing, 
more frequently. Keep them in production, but don't have so long time periods tied up. I think that's no one's thinking like that. Oh, I'm not sure if all my inventory is going to be ready, but there's a thousand in the back of the warehouse that are ready. Get them on the water, get them going. You know what I mean? Like you ordered 4,000, but there's a thousand ready. You just don't know that because you didn't ask because you're talking about your PO. That's true. That's true. That's very smart. And again, that's what I'm what I'm doing already since years. <laughs> I don't and, uh, need to. I don't need to tell you, but it's it's good for the listeners, yeah. man. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm I'm saying I'm saying it's uh, it's good to realize that these are like best practices, which I didn't even know that you know many people are not actually implementing this already. And and definitely, this is the smart way. What you're suggesting. Oh, 100%. So, um, uh, Jamie, before we close, t- tell people uh, how can they reach out to you and uh, how can, can yeah, you help man. them with uh, with your uh, logistic, op- with your aggregators like uh, supply chain management? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool. Um, look, you know, for all your listeners, I've created a, a code seller process and our our software to to run your your business in China is nine dollars ninety nine a month. It's only you know ten dollars, but I'm doing twelve months, no subscription cost. So it's free to sign up for twelve months. If you know anyone's listening out there, you just have to hit um you know enter in seller process and you'll get twelve months no subscription. So you just have the software for free to run your business out of China. Um, Skewdrop.com, you know that's our business. And if anyone wants to reach out to me probably best on LinkedIn, Jamie Paros, or even if someone wants to email me, I'm happy to take emails, jamie at skewdrop.com. Um, any of the bigger sellers, you know, need a little bit more of a hand with numbers or, you know, different bits and pieces that we got. I've got a Calendly link attached to my signature in the jamie at skewdrop.com. And I'm happy to, um, you know, take calls with people. That's just what I do full time. And We've got a we've got a Facebook community here in Australia, Endgame Network, um, three and a half thousand Amazon sellers. So if you want to join that community, that's pretty cool. Um, and last year we did our first massive event, Southern Seller Fest. We had three hundred and eighty sellers and some of the biggest sellers in the world that came out to Australia last September, which was awesome. And we're doing another one this year in November in Sydney. So if anyone's in that neck of the woods um, in Australia, neck of the woods in in November come to Sydney and we've got a three day event for Amazon sellers, Southern sellerfest.com. Check that out. And um, yeah, it's going to be a really awesome event. We've got some amazing speakers. I can't tell tell anyone about the speakers yet, but um, we've secured some of the biggest names and some that, you know, very close to you. Um, so they're coming out as well. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I'll definitely yeah, <laughs> look forward to that. Uh, all right. So cool. Thank you again, Jamie. That was a very insightful Uh, very useful information for our listeners for sure thank you again awesome thank you for having me man so guys remember that in every episode we have uh, some complementary material that you can download for free from our website thesellerprocess.com or you can find the link in the youtube uh, description so go there find it you will find uh, you will be able to download a spreadsheet with a price comparison of 3pls and and this china based structure and as well as some slides with uh, uh, more some of the information that we spoke about so in case you're like more uh, like a reader kind of learner you can you can read this information from those slides so guys remember again the key to success is to emulate the best so take home the advice that Jamie just shared with us and start implementing them in your business and have I wish you to have a productive week and I'll see you in the next episode hey entrepreneurs I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you 
and leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.